Hotep, everybody. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. Uh, it is Thursday, January 3rd, 2019. And we are live. Hope everybody's doing well today. Happy New Year. Uh, once again, everybody, if I haven't talked to you uh, in the new year. So I wanted to um, talk about this story. I saw uh, some articles about it uh, the past couple of days. Uh, the first one I saw was from uh, face2faceafrica.com and then um, blavity.com has a good article about it also. And this deals with um, actor Boris Kojo. So we saw Boris Kojo, you know, he's well known for being in the Soul Food TV show. Um, and that's where he met uh, his wife, Nicole Airy Parker. Okay. She played the role of Terry Joseph. Um, and a lot of people know that he's half Ghanaian and half German. His wife is, and his mother uh, is German and his father was uh, from Ghana. Okay. So over the holidays, okay, over the holidays, uh, he invited 40 of his uh, celebrity, of his African-American celebrity friends uh, to Ghana for the Full Circle Festival, the Full Circle Festival in Ghana, okay? And the Full Circle Festival uh, is dedicated to honor, to, to quote, uh, is dedicated to honoring, quote, our ancestry by celebrating our heritage and generational legacy, end quote, okay? So, I mean, this was something that was really, really powerful. I was reading articles, I saw uh, some of the video clips, and this is, uh, you know, we posted the article here on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network. I mean, it got, overnight, it got like 3,000 likes. I mean, this is something really, really powerful, and people are watching this, and it's helping reconnect African Americans to African history and culture. We know we just finished celebrating Kwanzaa uh, on January 1st, uh, the seventh principle is Imani, which means faith, but we know that we carry the principles of the Nguzu Saba with us 365 days out of the year, all right? So everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page, invite your friends to tune in also, okay? And African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network on the audio podcast of our radio shows to reach thousands of potential customers across the country all right okay so if we look at uh and let me post the information here uh on the thread of the broadcast also and pin it all right all right so uh his wife was there of course you had uh michael jai white uh you had anthony anderson uh you had gabare sidibe who's on um the tv show empire uh, so they learned a lot about, uh, you know, African history, African culture, and it's a good way uh, for us to reconnect. All right. And we know that Ghana was one of the main uh, uh, countries where African people were uh, taken out of. And, and it wasn't just West Africa also. I mean, they're taken out of Central Africa, you know, about 20, uh, about 20 percent of African-Americans have ancestry that go back to uh, Angola and the Congo, all right? So it wasn't just West Africa, but we know Ghana was one of the, um, one of the main countries uh, whose population was depleted. So if we look at the article from uh, blavity.com, okay? And I wanna show you, I wanna show you a picture here also of um, some of these African-American celebrities that were there. And this is it, it's a life changing experience. I haven't been to Africa yet, but a lot of my teachers have I've talked to people who have. I'll be going someday uh, soon. All right. So here is um, uh, a picture. This was on Twitter of some of them who were there. There's a total of 40 uh, of his um, black celebrity friends who were there. All right. And. OK. All right, so let's look at uh, what it says here. So a bunch of um, our favorite African-American celebrities went to the motherland to celebrate the origins of the culture 
and ring in the new year. Now, the group was led by actor Boris Kojo, who hosted the Full Circle Festival in Ghana. Uh, and this is an event dedicated to honoring our ancestry by celebrating our history and generational legacy. And um, also, GhanaWeb.com, the website GhanaWeb.com, has uh, information about this. They have an article about this as well. Top African American celebrities in Ghana for Full Circle Festival. Okay, uh, you had Naomi Campbell, uh, Rosario uh, Rosario Dawson, uh, real estate mogul Jay Morrison. I know Jay Morrison. Uh, we've been on the pound together in Atlanta at the. Um, wasn't the all black national convention. It was the uh, black power Awards. black power Awards. Okay. Uh, so those are just a, a few of the people who were there. So uh, his wife, Nicole Albert Parker was there as well. Now. So the admittedly, uh, so Gabrielle Sidibe was there also, and she recorded uh, some of the festivities and uh, the article from Blavity says the admittedly emotional empire star, also filmed power up uh, filmed a powerful speech um given during the festival about the african diaspora quote this is what we were doing in ghana we were returning home end quote she wrote okay and uh let me play let's see here uh okay we so we have it in the um it's in the article but let me see if i can play it here for you uh, let me plug up my speakers here because I'm on uh, my new laptop and the headphone jack is in a different place on this one. My other laptop was dying on me, so I had to buy a new laptop. And let's see. Let me turn on the speaker here. All right. So let's try this. And uh, let's see, we can uh, do a share so you can see it also. Let's check this out just a second here. Why is this? Okay. All right, there we go. I turn the sound up. Darkness, so we see no light that we can never find our way back here where we are right now. Back here in the circle, but we are here because the spirit that is in us. All right, this is the year of return. So um, the reason why this is so significant is significant any year, okay? It's significant any year. And Gabrielle Sidibe, she said that, um, uh, she said the camel work is shoddy. She was recording this. She said the camel work is shoddy. She said because, she said because I was crying, but hearing him is more important than seeing him, okay? That's why the camel work, went out of uh what was not on him she said she was crying all right so 2019 commemorates the 400th year anniversary of africans coming into jamestown virginia as enslaved africans okay even though they were quote unquote indigenous servants it wasn't by choice now it's important to note that that's not the first time african people came to the land we call the United States of America because we were already here. This was our land stolen from us, okay? August 20th, 1619 did happen, but we've been here going back at least 51,700 years. And if you read the first Americans were Africans documented evidence by Dr. David M. Hotel, he deals with this, uh, he deals with this in his book, all right? The first Americans were Africans documented evidence. By Dr. David M. Hotep. He deals with overwhelming evidence of an African presence in this country uh, going back at least 51,700 years ago to Khoisan, who have the oldest DNA on the planet, and they're the ancestors to Dainu and the Twago all around the world. But 
even though we were already here, and this was our land stolen from us, we were here before Native Americans even came into existence. Because he talks about how um, Asians come to this land around 3000 BC and they intermix with the Africans who were already here and their uh, offspring or who we call Native Americans. When you look at old black and white photographs of Native Americans, these were usually a dark skinned, uh, a dark skinned people. They were not very light skinned, almost white looking people. OK, so. Even though we were already here, that does not mean a transatlantic slave trade did not happen. You, we, we have to understand the chronology of history going back at least 50,000 years. Yes, it did happen. So you're going to have a lot of celebrations taking place, a lot of commemorations taking place, uh, commemorating August 20th, 1619. So when we have these commemorations, and this is something I talked about in my, um, my Kwanzaa event, uh, my Kwanzaa uh, presentation, at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. I said, when we have these uh, commemorations, right, dealing with 400 years, we have to understand, no, we were here for tens of thousands of years before that, all right? And we did not first come to this land we call the United States of America, conquered by Europeans, shackled in chains. Now, there's a House resolution, uh, House Resolution 1242, and we know Democrats took control of the House of Representatives back again today, good bring some sanity back to this, what's going on. Um, how, check, everybody check this out, House Resolution 1242, 400 Years of African American History Commission Act, 400 Years of African American History Commission Act. And this, um, you can read this at congress.gov, congress.gov. That's where you can read all the bills, right, that come out of the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate, congress.gov. Uh, the sponsor's representative, uh, Bobby Scott, Okay, of uh, Virginia, and he is a member of the Congressional. He's a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. All right, and uh, we'll post a link here. But this House resolution is a bill that establishes the 400 years of African American History Commission to develop and carry out activities throughout the United States to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of Africans in the English colonies at Point Comfort, Virginia in 1619. We were even there in the English colonies before this took place, okay? Because uh, Dr. David M. Hotep on page 67, I think it's 67 of his book, I just talked to him a, a couple of days ago. His new book is coming out, he said, uh, end of February. He's working on it now, trying to finish it up. End of February, it's called The First Americans Were Africans Revisited, okay? And page, page 65, uh, he talks about John Smith, Captain, Captain John Smith and Black Indians. And he talks about, he says, in 1607, because we know Jamestown, Virginia was founded in 1607. He says in 1607, the Englishman, Captain John Smith, built the first permanent Caucasian settlement in North America in Jamestown, Virginia. He said, he said, while building the settlement, Captain John Smith made contact with the Powhatan tribe, P-O-W-H-A-T-A-N. He said the Powhatans were part of the Algonquin speakers who were the largest group of Indians in Virginia as late as the time Captain John Smith arrived. The Algonquins were a group of Africans, okay, who get classified as Native Americans. There were more than 10,000 Algonquin in Virginia alone before the colonists arrived. Quote, Europeans called the Delaware Indians redskins because of their reddish natural complexion and the vermilion makeup they were fond of and decorated their bodies, end quote. Therefore, they were unfortunately called redskins and sometimes called red devils by the European settlers, also referring to their skin tone. In 1607, Captain John Smith described the chief of the Powhatans writing, quote, Powhatan more like a devil than a man with some 200 more as black as him. Powhatan more like a devil than a man with some 200 more as black as himself, end quote. So when Captain John Smith described the chief 
indirectly saying his braids were as black as he was, it is logical to assume that he too was black. When Captain John Smith described the Powhatans as devils and black, he was referring to skin tone. Dr. Clyde Winters agrees saying, quote, early Americans would certainly be able to tell the difference between paint and complexion, end quote. In any case, whether the Powhatans, in, in any case, whether the Powhatans were black at this late date or not, does not change the fact that the first Americans were Africans. These first Americans remained black complexioned until 3000 BC when the first Asians entered and began to mix blood with the proto-American with the proto-American Africans. But even then you're going to have some groups that did not intermix also. You're going to have some you're going to have some that intermix with Asians, you're going to have some groups that did not intermix with Asians. All right. And he put me in contact with a sister who is her name is Chief Warhorse. She's a chief of a tribe of black Indians in Louisiana. And there are about 30,000 of them down there. I forgot the name of the tribe. I have to find out. Her name is Chief Warhorse. And I, he put me in contact with her. I talked to her for about an hour. More Really, she talked to me for about an hour because that sister can talk. Um, and she said they 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 there there are dark black African black Indians and they have not intermixed outside of their tribe. They have not intermixed um with people outside of their tribe and have children with them, things like this. So they have maintained their complexion. All right. So that's a history that has to be included when we have this 400 year commemoration. That's a history that is not talked about. Uh, and, and so we did not first come here August 20th, 1619, even though that did happen in Jamestown, Virginia. And the Spanish were taking Africans into the territory we call South Carolina in the 1520s. The Spanish were doing this in the 1520s because the Spanish were involved in the transatlantic slave trade before the English got involved. OK, in the span in back in May of 2018, when Kanye West made his idiotic remarks about slavery sounding like a choice, I interviewed Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, formerly known as Booker T. Comey. You see him in the Hidden Colors documentaries and uh, 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti uh, from director Tariq Nasheed. And we talked about how when the Moors were losing control in Spain and being conquered, some of them are going to flee. Others are going to be enslaved and taken into Spanish territories. They're taken into South Carolina, they're taken into Florida. Okay. So you have multiple things taking place at the same time. You have the transatlantic slave trade taking place, they're bringing Africans from Africa. You have uh, some African, you already had Africans in Europe. From going, uh, going back to 711 AD and even before then, but the, but the wave that we talk about are the Africans known as the Moors going into the Iberian Peninsula in 711 AD, which today is known as Spain and Portugal. And they go all throughout Europe. So you already had Africans there as well. Some of them are going to be enslaved. And then you had Africans who were already in this land for for fifty one thousand uh, for, for about fifty thousand years, you already have them here as well. So you have multiple things happening at the same time. It's not just one thing. So this is why we have to understand a chronology of history, right? And understand what's taking place at the same time. All right. Yeah, Chief Warhorse. Okay, how's everybody doing? Now, African American business owners. Hey, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Okay. African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We know it's January. A lot of people want to jumpstart their business. They're looking for uh, new ways to bring find new customers. Uh, email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We take your 30 second and 60 second audio commercial, put it into the audio podcast of our radio show that we do Sunday nights, the African History Network show. And some of the broadcasts we do throughout the week, we're on six different podcast platforms, iTunes, CastBox, uh, Blog Talk Radio, uh, Acast, FM Player. We reach people all across the country. 
First month is 50% off. Second month is free. Special January promotion. First month, and then this is running until uh, January 4th, okay? Uh, first month is 50% off. Second month is free. Email us at customerservice at africanhistorynetwork.com. All right, let's continue here. Okay, so, um, so you have the full circle. Um, you have the full circle uh, event that took place in Ghana. All right. And uh, we'll post this information also because we have a 48 hour sale. I forgot to tell you, we have a 48 hour sale going on uh, at the African History Network as well. And uh, some of our bundle packs, you get 50 percent off or close to it. And uh, we have the uh, eight digital download uh, bundle pack, the Black Panther eight digital download bundle pack includes eight of my presentations, including three dealing with the film Black Panther. That's on sale $30, regularly $80, okay, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right, let's continue here. Okay, so um, so Rod uh, Rosario Dawson was there as well. Uh, you had uh, Michael J. White. You had Idris Elba, uh, who was there. Okay, we'll, we'll show this picture because we know, I know the ladies want to see this. All right. <laughs> Um, let's see. And I met, uh, Michael J. White's brother, Memnon. I met him, uh, back in August at the, um, Return of the Gods. We were both speaking at the Return of the Gods event at the World Beat Center in, uh, San Diego. Okay. So, uh, Michael J. White was there. Uh, Idris Elba, uh, was there also. Uh, Idris Elba was DJing. Uh, here's Michael J. White, uh, and they are listening to some uh, African drumming. Okay, let's see. Let's play this. And that's Boris Kojo. <laughs> All right. So, um, it was a really, really uh, spiritual uh, event. You had Cynthia Bailey, who was there as well, model and reality uh, star. Cynthia Bailey showed off her motherland, given features, and struck a pose. Uh, so this is what was taking place. Now, if we look at the article from, um, let's see here. Oh, uh, Baby Boy star A.J. Johnson was there also, and she forged a spiritual connection by getting baptized in the waters that once carried the ancestors uh, away on slave ships. Let's uh, share, this, share this also. Okay, here's A.J. Johnson, and she's a personal trainer. I just saw her three about three, four months ago on Sister Circle Live on TV One. Uh, she said, as, uh, let's see, as these sacred waters wash over me, I cry for them. I feel their love and gratitude that I have not forgotten them or their journey. And I have a firm grip on the torch they pass. It has taken 400 years, but I'm here, she wrote. Okay. This is her uh, Instagram uh, page. Now, here's Boris Kojo with his father. Okay. Uh, cause his father, uh, is Ghanaian. This is an older picture. It looks like, uh, the trip was very personal for Boris Kojo because his father was from Ghana during the trip. He posted a touching tribute to, uh, his father. He said, my love for Ghana is part of my identity. It is in my DNA and my soul. I come back here because I want to feel connected to that part of me. I, I, I feel whole. I feel his spirit with me. As I'm walking the streets he grew up on, uh, this was his home. Now it's mine. Happy birthday, Pop. Rest in peace. Okay. Dr. Eric uh, Kojo was his father. All right. So now there's an uh, article from Ghana.web, GhanaWeb.com, I should say, GhanaWeb.com that talks about this. Top African American celebrities in Ghana uh, for Full Circle Festival. Okay, and it uh, in the article it says a number of African American celebrities continue to arrive in Ghana for the week long inaugural uh, Full Circle Festival. So this article is from Saturday, December 29th, 
2018, okay? And it says that um, uh, the British international model Naomi Campbell uh, uh, also joins British actor Idris Elba in Accra to uh, take part in the festival. The festival is chaired by the Office of His Excellency, President uh, Nana Akufo, uh, Akufo uh, Addo, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, A-D-D-O, okay? And, and, and presented by the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Business Development and the Offices of Diaspora Affairs, okay? The Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of uh, Business Development, and the Office of Diaspora Affairs. The festival is hosted by Hollywood actor Boris Kojo and international marketing genius uh, Bozoma St. John. Okay, she used to be with uh, Uber, okay? Um, she used to have an executive position with Uber. Now, the Full Circle Festival was established to honor our ancestry by celebrating our heritage and generational legacy. The star studded guests will experience Ghana for its beauty, vibrant culture, compassionate people, and wonderful food. All right. So, I mean, this is, I mean, this is something, I don't, I don't remember um, something like this happening before. We have an African American celebrity who is, you know, uh, part continental African who helps organize something like this to bring African Americans back to the motherland like this. Okay. This is something that's really, really important. And you're going to see a lot of commemorations, a lot of talk about this in uh, 2019 also. All right. Let me post a link to uh, congress.gov um, that for HR 1242. And the reason why is, is because they have grants uh, tied to HR 42. So community organizations can get funding to uh, put on events and do research, et cetera. Um, the commission may uh, provide one, grants to communities and nonprofit organizations for the development of programs, two, grants to research and, and scholarly organizations to research publish or distribute information relating to the arrival of Africans in the United States, and three, technical assistance to states, localities, and nonprofit organizations to further the commemoration, all right? So uh, the commemoration, the, the commission shall terminate on July 1st, 2020, July 1st, 2020. All expenditures of the commission, all expenditures of the commission shall be made solely from donated funds. So this is an example, right, of, you hear me talk about how politics is, uh, it deals with the redistribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources. Politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources. This is a bill in Congress, okay, H.R. 1242. There's funding, there are grants tied to this. They have all types of bills like this for historical purposes, they have a, we, we, a lot of African Americans are totally locked out of this. Don't know that this stuff exists. Okay, the federal budget is about four trillion. The 2019 federal budget, I think, is 4.1 trillion dollars. There's money all over the place. Oftentimes, we just don't know this. Oftentimes, we just locked out of locked out of this. There's money all over the place. Okay, and it's our money because they got the money from taxpayers. This is our money. We need to go get some of our damn money. Okay, so so everybody read this. Um, uh, community organizations, et cetera. This is here's an opportunity to get some funding for different events and programs that you have surrounding uh, uh, August 20th, 1619. Okay. All right. How's everybody doing? Okay, Anita said the trip was powerful. How do you all like this type of information? All right. And um, be sure to visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can listen to the audio podcast of our radio show there. And uh, we have almost 900 audio podcasts going back to 2010. So we're going on nine years because I started the show March 10th, 
2010. So we're coming up on our nine year anniversary. You can also donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. All right. Now, face to face Africa.com had a good article about this as well. And I'll show you one of these pictures because I, I know the ladies want to see the pictures <laughs> of the men. <laughs> okay. Um, and face to face Africa.com, you see me post articles from them basically on a daily basis. They're one of the um, 35 different news sources I monitor on a, uh, on a daily basis. Okay. So let's bring this one up here. And it's a really, really good uh, African news source, right? Uh, why all the black celebs chose Ghana for the holidays? Why all the black celebs celebs chose Ghana for the holidays? So we see Michael Jai White on uh, my left. Uh, we see Jaman Hansu, who played Joseph St. Q in the movie Amistad. We see Boris Kojo in the middle. Uh, we see Anthony Anderson from Blackish and also Jadena. Uh, uh, the uh, artist, uh, Jindana, as well. All right. So in the article, they talk about how uh, the Christmas and New Year holidays in Ghana have been very memorable and historic. Quite a handful of stars in the diaspora trooped into the West African nation to spend the season and their activities uh, on social media prove they had a time of their lives. This was primarily made possible by Ghanaian German actor, because he's half Ghanaian and half German, uh, Boris Kojo, who pledged to visit his father's home country during the festive season with some of his notable black celebrity buddies, okay? And he said, quote, being that my father was from Ghana and we visited my grandmother, my cousins, and my uncles every holiday, we had, uh, we had makes me really uh, connected to our country, okay? And he said this uh, in a video in the article from ghanaweb.com um they have a video of him talking about uh let me see hold on oh he's actually in this one here okay i can show you i'll show you this one here also um let's see here let's bring this back up this was it because there's another video in the article from ghanaweb.com i'll have more being that my father People feel the culture, um, connect with their energetic heritage, they can relax on the beaches and tour the castles, and then share their experience with the millions and millions of followers. Of course, none of this will be possible without partners who understand the importance of showing the world what an amazing all right okay all right so let's continue so this was something monumental i hope uh i hope it continues i hope they do something like this each year all right. So the decision to bring uh, dozens of celebrities to Ghana follows a request from the government of Ghana in line with its year of return 2019 program. Its year of return 2019 uh, program welcoming African-Americans and the black diaspora to return to the country where their ancestors were kidnapped and enslaved in America some 400 years ago. OK, now. Just, just so we understand, the Africans were being taken out of Ghana before 400 years ago. That would be 1619. No, the Portuguese were involved going back to about 1441. Okay, and they were taken. And Africans are being taken out of Ghana long before 1619. 1619 deals with Africans coming into Jamestown, Virginia. 1619 to 2019, 400 years there. Africans were being taken, the, the transatlantic slave trade was well underway by 1619. They were already being taken out of Ghana long before then, okay? The Portuguese get involved right about 1441, and, and the Portuguese dominate for the first 200 years also, 
they, the, the, the Spanish are get involved right after the Portuguese, but the Portuguese dominate the slave trade for the first 200 years. Now, the year of return 2019 includes activities spread across the year, okay, starting from, uh, starting from the visit of African-American celebrities funded by Ghana, okay? So uh, you, we're going to see these activities all throughout the year. That's fantastic. From those who touch the shores of Ghana, courtesy Boris Kojo, to those who independently join in on the fun, face-to-face -face Africa shares with you uh, some of the familiar faces who were in town. And they have some pictures. I showed you some of the pictures here. Uh, okay, we'll show you some more of these pictures because these are, and this is this is very, very important. We just finished celebrating Kwanzaa. We go, we're going into January, Dr. King Day, February, African American History Month. We know the film Black Panther was huge. Um, did one point over $1.3 billion worldwide. And the Black Panther helps to reconnect African Americans to African history and culture. Uh, I've talked about this. I talked about this in my Kwanzaa presentation because my Kwanzaa presentation that I did December 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History was called From Kwanzaa to Wakanda, From Kwanzaa to, to Wakanda, Reconnecting African Americans to African Culture for Self Empowerment. Uh, so, we, so we have one picture here of them. We see A.J. Johnson, Anthony Anderson here as well. Um, this is a picture, it looks like, of basically women here and the men in the background. All right. Here's another picture uh, of them as well. Okay, now this is a uh, Ghanaian German uh, footballer or soccer star, Jerome uh, boating, B O A T E N G. All right. Here's another picture of him as well. He's with, uh, and soccer is big in Africa also. When I go to the, um, each year on the 4th of July, uh, the UACO organization, uh, United African, uh, countries organization, and it's an organization of continental Africans and African Americans is here is here in Detroit. It's an organization of continental Africans, and they have them from different African countries. And out at Eliza Howell Park in Detroit, they have this big event, the fourth the fourth of July or the fourth of July, right? And they have tents, they have free food, they have free African food, and each of about eighteen different uh, countries represented. Okay, and each one will have a tent. And they and they give away the food. They give away they like, some African food from their country, from their countries. But they have soccer games out there as well. And and the brothers out there playing soccer, they're representing their different countries. They have their soccer uniforms on, and you know th th these games are going for a few hours. So soccer is huge in Africa. All right, and then uh, okay, so you can check out the. Uh, you can check out the rest of the pictures also here. All right, we'll post the link to this article uh, here as well. Diggy Simmons was there also. Um, son of, um, yeah, D, uh, Diggy Simmons was there also. Um, son of Reverend Run. Let's post this link here as well. All right. Okay, so let's continue We're about to wrap up here. Hey, African American business owners, post your name and your business here on the thread of the broadcast and email us at African History Network.com. Let me say, email us at customer service at African History Network.com. Customer service at African History Network.com to find out how to. Um, advertise with the African History Network. We can get your ads running, up and running today or uh, tomorrow, okay? We can get your ads up and running. And we can record a commercial for you also if you don't have one as well, all right? And that's uh, no additional charge. We can record a commercial for you also if you don't have one. Okay, let's look at some of your comments. Alexander, love it. Cedric, okay, how you doing, Cedric? Uh, and let me share this here. 
All right. So be sure to listen to the African History Network show Sundays, uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation WFDF. And uh, we broadcast here on Facebook Live also, okay? And follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. And uh, also follow us uh, on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Follow us on our YouTube channel, uh, Michael M. Hotep as well, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, all right? Okay, let's see here. And let me share this quickly here. All right, so 2019 is here. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting year. Uh, not only do you have a 400th year commemoration of um, Jamestown, Virginia, but also you have Democrats who took control of the House of Representatives, and they're going to give Donald Trump hail. Maxine Waters is the new chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, now, she won't be able to get Donald Trump's uh, tax returns. That's the Ways and Means Committee that can, that, that can do that. But um, she is going to, you know, uh, news1.com had a good article. We'll talk about this some um, uh, Sunday night. And this is like really seems like a short week because it doesn't seem like Thursday. You know, this seems like a short week because, you know, we had Kwanzaa and I was at Kwanzaa events uh, at the Charles H. Wright Museum and also Burt's Warehouse here in Detroit. I was speaking at two events and I was a vendor. Um, and so this seems like a really, really crazy week. Right. But the week's almost over. <laughs> the week is almost over. So for some people, they're happy about that. OK, but News1.com has an article, Maxine Waters to pressure corporations on diversity. Maxine Waters to pressure corporations on diverse. Uh, uh, Maxine Waters plans to turn up the heat on corporations that lack diversity. She's also going to uh, go after those uh, corporations that deal with predatory lending, things like that. She's really big on that because they target African-Americans and Hispanics as well. Some top companies are in panic mode, according to lobbyists. Corporate America has been put on notice about its lack of diversity by California's Democratic Representative Maxine Waters, who is poised to chair a key congressional committee. So you're going to have five uh, African Americans who, who who chair committees, and th this is the most power the Congressional Black Caucus has had since their inception. You're going to have 55 members of the CBC and they're gonna chair five committees also. Maxine Waters intends to use her new authority to pressure companies to hire more people of color and, and, and women to serve in top positions, uh, Political reported on Wednesday, okay, political.com. After sweeping House Republicans uh, out of power in the midterm elections, Maxine Waters is expected to make history on January 3rd, 2019, as the first woman and first African American to uh, to chair uh, the House Financial Services Committee. That enables her to turn up the heat on America's wealthiest corporations. The lack of diversity at Fortune 500 companies is shameful. About 73% of whites hold senior executive positions, according to Fortune magazine. Asians represented 21% of business leaders, while Latinos and African Americans hold just 3% and 2% of those positions respect, or respectfully, uh, respectively. Latinos 3%, African Americans 2%, okay, hold senior executive positions at Fortune 500 companies. Now, many of these companies are companies that we spend hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars with, with each year. So even though I'm all for economic empowerment, I'm all for business ownership, right? A lot, a lot of it, just to be honest, ain't cracked up to what is what it what is to be in like documentaries and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just to tell you, and my degree is in, in business administration, right? Uh, go look at the uh, broadcast I did dealing with. Um, um, Essence Magazine owner Rich Dennis buys Madam C.J. Walker's home to make incubator for black businesswomen. I did that January 2nd. And this ties into cooperative economics and also look at the one that I did dealing with Kwanzaa and uh, cooperative economics, okay? 
Uh, and the reason why is, is because we have a rich history of uh, cooperative economics, Ujamaa, dealing with co-ops, everything from the Free African Society uh, to the Color Merchants Association, the Color Farmers Union. Uh, we have a rich history of this, but largely we have forgotten this history. And uh, the book by um, Dr. Jessica Gordon Nemhard, who I interviewed back in 2014, her book details this. It's called Collective Courage, A History of African-American Cooperative Economic Thought and Practice, Collective Courage. Um, a history of African American cooperative economic thought and practice, right? And this deal, it took about 15 years to write this book. And this deals with how we use cooperative economics to help fight back against white supremacy and racism. And we engaged in this during slavery also. The Free African Society was founded in 1787 during slavery. This is um, uh, four years after the American Revolutionary War ended in 1783. So we have a rich history of this, but we have largely forgotten that history. One, two, African-Americans went to white business schools to learn white business principles and then tried to employ them in the African-American community. And that largely does not work because our history and our culture is different. And they're doing this. They're trying to imply these white business principles. OK, of, of European capitalism. They're trying to employ these and not understanding our history and culture. OK, and understanding our conditions and circumstances are different. So instead of us tapping into our history, OK, and understanding the history of the co-ops, OK, we're trying to emulate white business structures. And my degree is in business administration. I learned that stuff. And I'm telling you, most, a lot of that stuff don't work for us. OK, that's just real talk. My degree is in business administration with a major in marketing from Wayne State University. I did business consulting for seven years. I worked in corporate America. But but a lot of that stuff that we learn in business schools, that's that that's that's taught by white business professors for white people. A lot of stuff does not work for us. OK, but when so if you read the article from News One dot com, stop saying black people don't support each other economically. Stop saying black people don't support each other economically. Um, it, it, it they talk about uh, in here. She's asked a question. Well, she gives some examples, the Color Farmers Union. The Color Farmers Union existed from 1886 to 1891. It grew to have 1.2 million members. This is probably the largest co-op, right, in our history. It grew to have 1.2 million members. Now, we know the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey engaged. He, he supported cooperatives. He engaged in economic empowerment. And he had between 1 million to 4 million members. The, 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 the estimates vary, but he had a million, he had a minimum of 1 million members uh, in the UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association here in the US, which was founded in 1914 in Jamaica. And he comes to the US in 1916. He's partly inspired by Booker T. Washington, okay? Booker T. Washington, we know, founded the, Na the uh, National Negro Business League in 1900. And then in 1928, the National Negro Business League creates the Colored Merchants Association, which was designed to help African-American grocery store owners better compete with the white chain stores. And it taught them marketing practices, better accounting principles. It helped them to pull resources to get lower prices on their products, things like this. The Colored Merchants Association. We have to study this history. We have a rich history of cooperative economics. But for cooperative economics to work, we have to cooperate. If cooperative economics does not work, if we don't cooperate, we can't have cooperative economics. So what happens is, right, when we go to white business schools or even business schools at HBCUs and we have professors who've been taught white business principles, if they don't adapt this based upon our history and culture to African-Americans, then what we, what we did was we tried to implement these white business principles in the African-American community and moved away from the cooperative economics. In moving away from the cooperative economics, it, it helped to break up cooperation. In moving away from the cooperative economics and in trying to employ white business principles in the African-American community, it helped to break up the cooperation because when we, were in, when we were engaging in cooperative economics, we had to cooperate. 
So we have to take a totally different approach to this. And your history and, and, and African history and culture gives us our VIPs, our values, our interests, and our principles. Okay, it, it gives us our VIPs, our values, our interests, and our principles, and it helps influence our economic empowerment and our political empowerment. Okay, so we have to understand this history. Okay, so she talks about the Color Merchants Association. And what happened was when we organized a lot of these cooperatives, we were attacked by white people, by white supremacists, by racists, white domestic terrorism. We were attacked, some of us killed for being involved in these types of things. So some of so the so the Color Merchants Association only lasted five years. They ended in 1891. They only lasted five years. All right. Let me show you this uh, very quickly here. We'll look at the pyramid principle. And these are some of the, uh, some of the things that we deal with in the online course that I teach, uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school, uh, which is a 14-hour, seven-session online course that deals with thousands of years of history, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Well, if we look at the pyramid principle uh, that Dr. Leonard Jeffries and Professor Jane Small, two of my teachers use, when we talk about the pyramid principle, we see the pyramid uh, of Khafre at Giza. The foundation of the pyramid is African history and culture. It gives us our values, our interests, and our principles. Our values, our interests, and our principles. It influences two sides of the pyramid, economic empowerment and political empowerment. We'll come to some of your questions in just a minute, Carl and Frankie. We'll come to your questions in just a minute here. Um, but so it doesn't matter how much money we have. If this foundation is not in place, we won't know what to do with the money. And when it influences our economic empowerment, it just doesn't influence whether or not we have businesses or how many we have. It influences the type of businesses we have, whether we, whether we engage in uh, white capitalism or cooperative economics coming from, a, coming from an African-American perspective, an African-centered perspective. So it, it, it influences how we engage in economic empowerment, the type of businesses we have, the structure of them, okay? And because we've been stripped a lot of that history and culture, we, move, we have moved away from the cooperatives, which, which are principles and practices we brought with us from Africa. And then the economic empowerment influences our political empowerment. And the political empowerment goes way beyond just voting. I'm talking about understanding political self-defense and understanding how politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of law, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. Okay? Politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of law, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. And this is uh, Dr. David M. Hotep in his book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. Visit his website, historictruth.info, historictruth.info, because you can download a two-page abstract of his book there also, okay, to get more information. You can download it for free. Uh, page 14 of his book deals with the discovery by Dr. Albert Goodyear in Allendale County, South Carolina, in 2004, where they discovered overwhelming evidence of an African presence in Allendale County, South Carolina, going back at least 51,700 years ago. They found artifacts, architecture, campsites, carvings, Egyptian writings, footprints, and lava, genetic M174D haploid groups dealing with DNA and genetics, linguistics, paintings, skulls, skeletons, structures, and tools. 13 different disciplines thoroughly documenting an African presence in this country going back at least 51,700 years. These are the Khoisan, the Khoisan, also known as the Khoi Khoi or the San, come from Southern Africa, and they go all around the world. This is an article from ScienceDaily.com from November 18, 2004, called New Evidence Puts Man in North America 50,000 Years Ago, which deals with Dr. Albert, Albert Goodyear's discovery, okay? And this is a picture of him. He's an archaeologist at the University of South Carolina. Okay, so very quickly here, in the um, online course that I teach, Ancient Kemet, uh, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Um, it's, we have a special 48 hour sale going on. It's regularly $130, it's on sale $40. It's a 10 course online bundle pack. It's a 10 course, uh, it's a 10 course online bundle pack. 
that's regularly 130 dollars is on sale 40 dollars right now it includes uh understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach in school great african women in history the mothers of civilization An online class i did dealing with the film black panther and some other some other presentations also this that's at africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com right on the home page we'll post the link here in uh just a minute let me see if i can flip over we'll post the link here um somebody asked the question am i on tune in yes tune go uh wherever you get your podcast from uh search for uh african search for the african history network show okay where we get your podcast from search for the african history network show yes we're on uh yes we're on tune in okay uh and let me try to find okay yeah, yes, we're on tune in. But here's some of the things we deal with. What it what was the transatlantic slave trade? What were some of the events that led up to the transatlantic slave trade starting? What role did Christopher Columbus play uh, in spreading the transatlantic slave trade? Because his four voyages are crucial. Understanding his four voyages are crucial to understanding the spread of the transatlantic slave trade. And Columbus never came to the land we call the United States of America. The closest he came here was Cuba, which is 90 miles away. When did Africans first come to the U.S. as slaves? Because like I said, the Spanish were taking Africans into the territory called South Carolina in the 1520s. And we know in the 1620s, in the 1620s, the Dutch were doing the same thing as well. Okay, this is how you get the colony of New Amsterdam. New Amsterdam became New York, a British colony. First, it was a Dutch colony. Did Africans sell themselves into slavery? We deal with that complicated history. Uh, because it's not exactly the way it's been told. We're African people in America before the slave trade. Yes, we were. The 800-year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors, shocking archaeological discoveries that are causing experts to rethink everything, insurance companies that took out insurance policies on slave ships and enslaved Africans on the plantations. This was big business. There were over 40 insurance companies in the U.S. that took out insurance policies on, on Africans on the plantations. Not, not just on the slave ships, but also on the plantations as well. Freemasonry, America, and the Founding Fathers, or the origin of the, of the terms America, Africa, and more. The problem with slave movies, why are we being bombarded with slave-themed movies and slave-themed TV show? Osar, 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 Osset, and Heru, who the Greeks called Osiris, Isis, and Horus, and the origins of the Immaculate Conception story. It was a very ancient story. It goes back to at least 3300 BC in ancient Nubia or ancient Ta-Nehisi. Um, That's a story told over and over and over again. The adoration, the immaculate conception, the virgin birth. That's an ancient story. Links to ancient Kemet, Egypt, and uh, Christianity. In the fake Willie Lynch letter 1712, because Willie Lynch never historically existed. We need to take the Willie Lynch letter and burn it and throw it in the garbage can. Willie Lynch never historically existed. The Willie Lynch letter has proven to be a fraud. Their words in the uh, Willie Lynch letter didn't even exist in the early 18th century, okay? But uh, unfortunately, a lot of our people don't notice. They still talk about Willie Lynch and the Willie Lynch syndrome. Willie Lynch never historically existed. You're giving too much power to someone who never historically existed. We, we, have, to, we have to study real history, okay? All right, so we have the um, um, the online the on uh, the online uh, the ten course online bundle pack, and it's all on demand. Also, watch at your own pace, all on demand, and uh, we have a forty eight hour sale going on. It's regularly one hundred thirty dollars. It's on sale forty dollars. Okay, uh, and so we'll just post this information here for you also so as soon as you register for this you can start watching watch from around the world and i'm doing a powerpoint presentation you know, we have slides we have video clips a lot of information for you okay so uh and then somebody asked a question uh okay martisha said congratulations on your anniversary okay african-american business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast uh, Marticia advertises with the African History Network also. Uh, she's a financial planner. How you doing, Marticia? Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, are you on TuneIn Radio? Yeah, we, uh, I'm on TuneIn. They have about 300 of my podcasts there on TuneIn.com. We're on six different podcast platforms. Uh, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, CastBox. We're on uh, FM Player, okay? And um, 
so wherever you get your podcast from, from uh, just search for the African History Network show, okay? Wherever you get your podcast from, search for the African History Network show. African American business owners, email us at customer service at African History Network.com. Customer service at African History Network.com. And um, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network special promotion. Um, run a couple more days, uh, buy one month, get the second month free, okay? And if you don't have a commercial, we can record one for you um, at no additional charge. Frankie said, this is very interesting. I am born and raised in South Carolina, Spartanburg. So South Carolina in the coastal land of South Carolina is where you have the Gullah Nation of people who are descendants of uh, Africans coming from West Africa, African slaves coming from West Africa. And in the in Georgia, the coastal land of Georgia, that's where you had the Geechee Nation. So you hear about the Gullah Geechee. The Gullah are in South Carolina. The Geechee are in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right. Carl, do you, uh, did that have a part to do with integration? What are you talking about, Carl? Alexander, how you doing, Alexander? Cedric, all right. Okay, so everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. And um, be sure to uh, turn on the notifications so you know when we go live also, all right? Turn on the notifications so you know when we go live. Follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, on YouTube also, and turn on notifications there as well. So when we go live, when we upload a video, you'll be notified about it. Um, okay, all right. Okay, guys, look, at we have to get out of here. Hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct wrong behavior. We're coming up, coming up on our ninth year anniversary, a nine-year anniversary of the African History Network show. And um, this is the 10-year uh, year anniversary of the African History Network, because I created it in, created it in late, 2009 and i started the african history network show march 10th um 2010 okay so you know at our on blog talk radio our blog talk radio page is the african history network show because so i used to broadcast live from there but that's where we upload the pot all the podcasts we do the sunday night show these uh broadcasts i do on facebook we put them in audio podcast form we have almost 900 episodes there Okay, almost 900 episodes there also. Okay, so uh, Patricia, thanks for all the teaching. All right, thanks, Patricia. Okay, all right, so hey, remember the African History Network, we focus on educating aspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. If you want to donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Uh, and if you don't have a PayPal account, go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, click on the yellow donate button because the sell of the DVDs, sell of the online courses and the donations that helps us to stay on the air, keep doing the research, finance the show, pay the bills, etc. All right, right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.